Hey guys, Christian here and in this video we are covering Traffic, the free and open source reverse proxy that allows you to easily set up and manage routing and HTTPS for all of your applications and get rid of this annoying certificate warning in your browser. It is absolutely amazing. I know if you're following this channel, you might know it already since I often covered it in previous videos. However, since the latest version of Traffic changed a couple of things here and there and my last tutorial is already a bit old, I wanted to make this new video to recap all of the important installation and configuration steps in Traffic to easily get started. Today we'll focus on the Docker integration as well as setting up trusted TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt. So no Kubernetes in this part, but don't worry, I'm also working on a second part of this video covering the Kubernetes deployments as well. So this video is for everyone using traffic in Docker, no matter if you're just a beginner or you're already familiar with it, but you just need a little update about the new version configs. So keep watching and let's check it out together. Before we start, I've got something else that might be interesting. If you're a developer using Docker to automate workflows or if you're handling data collection tasks, then you should definitely check out our today's sponsor, Bright Data. With Bright Data, you can seamlessly integrate advanced tools for web scraping, proxy management, and cloud connectivity right into your Docker containers. Bright Data offers a robust global proxy network that lets you bypass gear restrictions and capture seamlessly all from within your Docker containers. Just imagine you need access to gear restricted content for testing or web scraping. These proxies are super useful for that task and they let you operate like a local in any region worldwide. And just because we are talking about security and HTTPS in this video, of course, they've got HTTPS enabled, making your data collection fully encrypted and secure as well. With just a few lines of code, the Bright Data's web scraping API can scale data collection tasks across multiple containers, making it ideal for handling large data sets in no time. But it's not just about collecting data. What happens next? Bright Data also integrates smoothly with any major cloud service like AWS, Google, and Snowflake. So what are you waiting for? Supercharge your data workflows today, try out Bright Data for free, and seamlessly integrate powerful web scraping tools, global proxies, and secure data collection right into your Docker setups. Of course, you will find a link to their website in the description box down below. And now let's get back to topic and start setting up traffic. Okay, so I know some of you might be already familiar with traffic, so I'll try to keep it short. In simple terms, traffic is a free and open source reverse proxy that allows you to route network requests to services and APIs in an easy way. It is often used to have a better control and protection of unencrypted web applications and protect them all with HTTPS or TLS to make sure the network requests are always encrypted and the connection is always trusted. It can also act as a load balancer to automatically distribute the incoming requests to multiple target services or nodes. That's why it is often used as a Kubernetes ingress controller. But in this video, as I said, we'll focus on Docker only, but just that you know, traffic is a pretty versatile application that can work in several other scenarios as well. And that's why I absolutely love it. And I'm using this on all of my Docker servers and Kubernetes clusters to protect my web applications and manage TLS certificates in an easy and simple way. Now to get started with it, you first definitely should check out the official documentation pages. I know since I've started to use it in many of my videos, I've always heard people saying that traffic is kind of complex and it doesn't work for them and so on. And yeah, to some extent, I have to agree it definitely needs some time to understand how to use it and configure it correctly. But in my opinion, that's mainly not because traffic itself would be complicated. That's just the nature of networking, web security and protocols. There are so many different technology stacks that all need to play together here. But don't worry, we will go through all of the important stuff together step by step. I also want to point you to my public repository boilerplates on GitHub. So this is a place where I'm collecting all sorts of templates for Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, Ansible. Yeah, all the amazing technologies I'm covering in my videos. And of course, here you will find also some great examples for traffic as well. So definitely check it out. That will help you to get started and configure traffic to work with your applications. Now, first, let's have a look at how to install and set up traffic on one of my virtual Docker servers. So if we go to the official documentation pages, there's a great a quick start guide. You will find some instructions on how to install and set up traffic with the Docker provider. So I'm just going to copy this template here and modify it a bit. And for this quick demonstration, I'm opening a new connection to my server demo one and create a new project directory traffic demo one. 
CD into that. So this is what we can use as a quick demonstration here. Now let's go into this directory on my remote server using VS Code. So here we can create a new Docker Compose file where we can paste all the content from the documentation quick start guide. Uh, by the way, I hope you have some general understanding and practice in Docker. If you don't, well, I've made some nice tutorials on my Patreon page that give you a great introduction. Of course, I link you this in the description box down below. And yeah, so here, uh, let me just modify a few things of this file a bit. So first of all, I'm going to change the name reverse proxy to just set it to traffic. I'm going to remove some of the comments here. We don't need that. And also add a container name. I think this is uh, much better to differentiate the projects from each other. And I'm also going to add a specific pinned version tag here. So you can see this is currently using the version 3.1, which is at the time of recording this video, probably the latest version, but I'm going to check it on the Docker Hub. So here we can see if we search for traffic, you can find the Docker image and all the version tags. So here we have a release candidate for version 3.2, but I'm going to use what is equivalent to the latest version tag. This is usually the latest stable version. This is the 3.1.5. And I'm also going to add the restart policy and set it to unless stopped. So this makes sure whenever you're making updates on your Linux server and you need to restart the server, the traffic reverse proxy is automatically restarted as well and always up and running unless you manually stop this Docker Compose project. Now, one thing that is very important at this point that you have to take care of when you are managing a bunch of different uh, Docker containers in separate Docker Compose files. So usually if you start this Docker Compose project, it will automatically create a separate Docker network just for this project and connect all the services listed in the Docker Compose file to this project. So when you are adding a bunch of other services that you need traffic to get access to, you can just list them here and you don't need to care about networks. But most of the time when you're managing multiple applications on the same Docker server, but you're managing them in different Docker Compose projects, they are usually creating always isolated networks. And it is important that the traffic container can reach out to all of the other containers that you want to make accessible through traffic. So that's why I usually create a separate Docker network just for adding the proxy services. So you can easily check with the Docker network LS command what uh, current Docker networks you have created on your machine. Don't choose the default bridge network for this because um, there is no DNS resolving possible in that network. So I would definitely create a new Docker network that you're just going to call, I don't know, proxy. I most of the time use the name front end for this. So here we can check the Docker network has been created. And when we go back to the Docker Compose file, we add a new section here that is called networks and add the name of our custom network in here. Now we need to make sure that we set the external flag to true because otherwise Docker Compose will try to create this network, but because we have manually created it and managed it on the Docker machine, we just need to import this externally managed network to this Compose project. And of course, we also need to attach the container to this network as well. Now, this is a simple and very minimalistic setup that would in theory work, but I just want to make a few more customizations to it because uh, first of all, as you can see here in the command flex, there are some flex that configure certain settings of the traffic reverse proxy. And I don't like to do it this way, so I'm just going to remove it here and creating a new directory in the project directory that I'm just gonna call config, where I create a static config file for traffic called traffic.yaml. And if we go back to the Docker Compose project, of course, we need to mount this static configuration file in the container. So I'm going to refer to the current project directory config, and I'm just gonna mount this single file into the etc. traffic location. So this is where traffic will look up its static configuration file and set it to read only so the container cannot make changes to its config file. Now, before we edit this config file, I think we should also quickly talk about the different types of configurations in traffic, as I think this is a quite important concept to understand. So traffic has two different types of configurations. First, the dynamic routing configuration, which contains the router, the service, the middleware, and certificate definitions. We'll talk about this later. And the startup configuration, also referred to as the static configuration, which contains the main settings of the traffic application to define the entry point the providers and some other general settings like logging and so on. 
This static configuration file can be set in three different ways, which are mutually exclusive. So that means you can only use one at the same time. You can use a YAML or TOML formatted config file, just like what we're doing in this tutorial. But you could also think about using CLI arguments or environment variables. I personally prefer using a static config file in YAML because I think that's just the easiest way. Since most applications we are using have YAML based config files, so everyone is familiar with the language and syntax, and we can easily mount that config file into the containers file system of traffic, edit it in VS Code, and yeah, that's really practical. But just that you know, in the end, it is basically up to you what you prefer using. If you're searching in the traffic documentation for any settings of the static configuration, you usually find examples for all these three different types of configurations. And also no matter which method you're using, the config settings are always the same. So it doesn't really make any difference what method you prefer using. All right, so let's go back to VS Code and let's add some general settings in this traffic configuration file. So here in the global section, you can define some things like check new version, set this to false. So I like to update my traffic and container images myself. I don't need any notification and I'm also going to disable any telemetry. And uh, what is also pretty useful, especially if you're beginning to learn how to use the traffic reverse proxy, you might want to set the log level to debug because otherwise you will only see the errors. So by default, it is set to the log level error. But sometimes um, if you experiment with a bunch of different flags and settings in traffic and it might not work directly, you just want to know if it's actually processed and what is the reason behind this error. And then it usually helps a lot to enable the debug log. Of course, you will also see a lot of noise in the log but sometimes it's really helping for troubleshooting. Also, I'm going to add the dashboard to the API and set it to true. So this is the administrative dashboard and traffic also has an API that you can access. And now we also have to add the entry points. By default, it always enables this web entry point here for TCP traffic, which is the standard board for HTTP. But you can, of course, also add any other entry points, for example, a web secure entry point with the address for for free. So that's the standard port for HTTPS traffic. Or you can also add any other TCP or UDP port and protocol. Just look up the documentation page for entry points as a reference. And also don't forget, if you added some entry points to this config file, that you of course also need to make them accessible in the Docker container. So here, I'm also going to add the port for for free for the web secure entry point. The port 8080 is, by the way, the port for the insecure dashboard and API in traffic. So because we have enabled it here, we don't need to manually create this entry point because it's automatically managed by traffic when you enable the dashboard and insecure settings of the API. Don't do this in production. This is just for testing. All right, so that's basically everything that we need. Uh, we have created the static config file, the Docker Compose file. Let's go back to the terminal and let's start the traffic reverse proxy by executing a Docker Compose app. So this will pull down the latest version and start up the container. So I'm currently starting it in the foreground so that we can see the log files. As I've explained, if you enable the debug logging, so then you will get a lot of noise in here. But it also will tell you a lot about how the system functions and if it's processing the specific rules and settings you have configured. Once we have that, you can also try and get access to the dashboard. So just enter HTTP, your server name or IP address where traffic is running on the port 8080, and then you get access to the traffic dashboard. By the way, by default, it usually doesn't have the dark mode enabled, so definitely click on that button here so that it just looks a bit nicer. And here in the dashboard, you can see all the information about uh, what rules, services, entry points, routers you have configured. Don't worry, we will go through all of the settings later here. Uh, what is also pretty nice in the latest version of traffic, there is a new button in here that is called plugins, which takes you to the traffic labs plugin catalog. So here you can also connect different other plugins to this reverse proxy. Some of them are really very exciting. So I definitely will take some time looking at those and making separate videos, for example, about mod security, where you can add stronger uh, protection and malicious pattern detection to your reverse proxy. It's pretty cool and basically make this a web security gateway. But yeah, for this video, we don't have to mess around with that. 
Okay guys, so that's how you install traffic in Docker and set up the static configuration file with the entry points and some other general settings. Now, let's have a look at how to route the incoming network requests to the target application services. And to explain how you can do this very easily in your network, we also have to look at your DNS because let's assume you're running two or more applications on the same server. To differentiate those incoming requests, you usually would have to expose them on different port numbers because only one service can listen at one port at the same time. So without any reverse proxy, you would have to connect to the IP address or DNS name of your server where the container is running and use the port number to connect to the desired target application. But of course, that's not really what we want when we're using a reverse proxy because we don't want to connect to our applications directly and define the different port numbers. Instead, we want to use traffic to receive all the incoming requests for the applications on the the two entry points and the standard ports and then traffic should take care of forwarding those requests to the actual target application. And the best way to differentiate those incoming requests is to use a new host name for each of your applications you want to access. Just to give you an example how that would look like in my home network. So for example, if I want to access app one, the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name, what I need to enter in the address bar of my browser would be app1.serverdemo1.home.clcreative.de. And of course the same would also work for the application two. On my local DNS server, which is an authoritative DNS server for the home.clcreative.de domain, I'm having two DNS entries here, one for the server itself and a so-called wildcard DNS record, which resolves any name in front of the server's name to its IP address as well. So that means when the client makes a request to the FQDN of application one, the DNS server will resolve the IP address of the server where traffic is running. Traffic, because it's listening on the main entry point, will receive this incoming request. And by configuring a specific host rule in traffic for the FQDNs of your application, it knows where to send this request to. Then you don't need to expose the application itself on a different port number anymore. You can just use the FQDN to access your applications on the standard ports 80 or 443 for HTTPS. And every request is automatically routed and protected by the traffic reverse proxy. Just a quick side note at this point here. If you don't know how to manage and set up a DNS server for your home lab and you generally want to know how to set up DNS records in an authoritative DNS server, I've made a tutorial about this entire topic. So I link you this in the description down below but generally speaking you could also think about just using your home router for this yeah most home routers allow you to set static dns records for any domain or dns record that you want or you can use a network security firewall if you've got something like this so it's depending on your setup and environment how the dns names are managed now to configure those specific rules for the application containers in traffic that I've talked about, we will need to use the dynamic configuration of traffic. Now remember, this is the second configuration type, which is a bit different from the static configuration because here you have to use the supported providers in traffic. Providers are infrastructure components and have, again, different ways of configuring them. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail here at this point. And if you're interested in learning these providers here in this table, you can see what provider is configured in which way. But for this tutorial, we only need to know the Docker provider. And this is configured using labels that you attach to the target applications containers. But first of all, we need to enable the Docker provider, which makes traffic monitor all the events of the Docker daemon. Uh, therefore, it needs to have access to the Docker socket. So if we go back to the Docker compose file, you can see that we've mounted the Docker socket as a volume into the containers file system. If there is a new container starting up with uh, some Docker labels, and that's where it gets its configuration from. So to enable this, we just need to uh, put those entries here in the static configuration of traffic. So we need to go back to the traffic.yaml configuration and add this section in here. Now, one thing that's also pretty important, by default, traffic monitors all the Docker events and it tries to expose each container that it can see on the Docker socket. And this is usually enabled by default. And honestly, I don't like this setting because I like to control myself which containers I want to expose and make available on the traffic reverse proxy and which ones I might not want to expose. And so therefore I usually recommend to add this setting to the Docker provider and set the exposed by default flag to false. 
Now that we have configured the Docker provider, we can now start adding the Docker labels to our example application to make it accessible. Now in traffic, there are three different functions you should know that define how the requests are routed to the target applications. First, the routers, which configure how the incoming requests are handled. So here you can define the rules, the encryption settings and so forth. Then the services, which are used to configure how to reach the target application. Usually this is configured by default in the Docker provider, so this is done automatically for us. And the middlewares, which are used to change specific parts of the requests, like changing headers, paths, adding basic authentication and so on. In this video, I'm not covering middlewares, as I think it should be covered on a separate video. And it is very much depending on your use case and the target application. So for routing simple web applications, we don't need to mess around with services or middlewares, so we'll only focus on routers for now. Now, as a reference, again, look at the official documentation page of routers. So here you will find all of the settings you can configure in the rules, which are a set of measures for the incoming requests. You can specify depending on which rules a traffic should forward the traffic to the actual container application. So here, for example, you could use a header matching. So if it matches a specific header in the HTTP request, you can use regular expressions. You can use host regular expressions. You can also use path matchers. So for example, only specific paths should be forwarded to specific containers. I think the most simplest way to achieve what we want is to use a host matcher. So this will basically match the FQDN of our container application. And to demonstrate how that would look like, let's go to one example project that I've deployed. So here, for example, this is a simple Nginx Docker container. That is an example like any other container that you might want to deploy on your network. Again, as I said uh, in the installation part of this uh, tutorial, if you want to access those containers with traffic, you need to put it to the same Docker network. So here we also need to define the front end network where we have put the traffic reverse proxy to make it externally managed and then attach this container to the front end network so that traffic can see and connect to it. And now we can add the rules settings to the label section of the Docker container. So here, first of all, because we have set the exposed by default flag to false, traffic will not try to monitor and expose this container by default. This you can do with the traffic.enable flag and set it to true. Now we need to add the router and then we need to define a name for our router. You can give it any name that you want. For example, nginx-http, that's usually the name that I prefer. And then we can add a rule to this setting. And here, if we go back to the documentation, we can use a host rule or host regular expression, whatever method we want to use. But let's give it a name, just nginx. I think this is fine. nginx.serverdemo1.home.cgrave.de. So this is my local DNS server because I've added a wildcard DNS record will automatically resolve to the IP address of where traffic is running. Now we also need to attach this to an entry point because in the traffic dashboard, you can see we have defined multiple entry points. And I don't know, by default, I think it will attach it to the web entry point, but I think it is better to specify to which entry point it should attach the router to. So let's just add the next configuration setting for the same router. And now we can set it to entry points, set it to web. So one thing is also important to understand. If you change any configuration to the labels of any the container that you want to expose via traffic, you don't have to restart the traffic reverse proxy. You just have to redeploy the container if you change the labels. Again, as I said, traffic will monitor the Docker socket and automatically apply those new rules. However, because we edited something in a static configuration file, this requires a restart. So that to enable the Docker provider first, we need to stop the traffic container in the terminal and let's just restart it. Let's let's put it to the background here. So, so I think this is fine. And now that the traffic proxy has enabled the provider for Docker, we can simply take this container down and restart it with the new labels that we have attached to it. And let's go back to the terminal here. I just want to show you the logs here. So here you can see in the debug logs, that's why I said this is really important for beginners to learn how it's working. You can see some debug logs configuration received for Nginx demo one. 
Here you can see the router nginx-http that we have defined with the entry point web. The rule set that we have configured, it automatically created a service object for us. So that's why I said we only need to take care about the routers here. But if you want to customize the service settings, you could also add another label referring to this service name here and change any of those specific settings if you want. Now let's try to open this Nginx web server. So here I'm just going to use the fully qualified domain name in the browser. As you can see, this is uh, notifying us that we're using an unencryption connection. So we are using the web entry point with the HTTP protocol. It's not using HTTPS, therefore it's saying not secure. But as you can see, we get access to the Nginx service without having to expose the Nginx server using a port number or anything. All right, guys, so that's it about the first part of the video. That's how you configure traffic to route incoming requests to the target applications. Now let's come to the interesting part. Let's talk about TLS because as you might have noticed, we only use the unencrypted HTTP protocol for now. But of course, one of the main benefits using a reverse proxy like traffic is that you can add HTTPS encryption to your applications and issue trusted TLS certificates. To explain how that's working, we need to go back to the presentation. Don't worry, I'm not going into too much detail on how TLS and HTTP works. By the way, I've done a video once on self-signed certificates in the past where I explained a lot about the certificate verification, importing the certificate chain in your browser and so forth. If you're interested, of course, I link you that in the description as well. But for this video, I want to focus on certificates from Let's Encrypt, which is a non-profit CA, a certificate authority that allows you to issue trusted TLS certificates completely for free. The cool thing about this is that if you're using those certificates for your applications, you will never see a certificate warning in the browser again, because the CA of Let's Encrypt is imported into to every device's browser or operating system as a trusted CA by default. So any application or service that is using valid Let's Encrypt certificates will be automatically trusted by any device in the world. To issue those trusted TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt, you have to have a public domain, which you also use in your DNS server to resolve the IP address of traffic. That's, by the way, also the reason why I'm using a subdomain of my clcreative.de domain for my home lab, because then I can easily have trusted invalid certificates for any services in my entire network. Now to issue TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt in traffic, you also have to connect it with a DNS provider like Cloudflare that supports the ACMA protocol, which stands for Automatic Certificate Management Environment. I know technically there are also other ways possible. Traffic has integrations for many other DNS providers available that automatically handle the DNS challenge and the verification. Of course, you could also do it manually and so on. But I think using Cloudflare as a DNS provider is just the best way to do it because Cloudflare is free, it is super reliable, and it also has some other very exciting features like APIs, web security, and other cool stuff. So yeah, Cloudflare is absolutely amazing, a big recommendation from my side. However, if you prefer using a different DNS provider, then feel free to check out the documentation of traffic if your DNS provider is listed here. If it's not, well, you might consider switching over to one of the supported providers like Cloudflare. Don't worry, you don't have to transfer your entire domain to Cloudflare. You just have to switch the name servers on your DNS registrar, so where you have registered your public domain, and just insert the name servers of Cloudflare. Flair. Just check the documentation of your DNS registrar how to do that. I'm pretty sure they have something about it. And also Cloudflare has some great documentation about this topic. So I think I don't need to go into too much detail here. Uh, by the way, for most common top level domains, you can even use Cloudflare itself as a domain registrar. So they have added this service for about a year or two. Unfortunately, you can't use it for the German DE top level domains, but for any .com or .net domains, I'm always using Cloudflare. So once you changed the name servers and imported your registered domain into Cloudflare, or maybe you have registered it directly in Cloudflare, then you should see it in the administrative dashboard and you can start making changes to it. Now to issue trusted CLS certificates that are valid for your domain, you have to prove that you have the ownership of the domain. And the way this is working is by using a so-called DNS challenge. So Let's Encrypt will challenge the DNS provider to create 
a specific TXT entry in the DNS settings. And that way you prove that you have the ownership of the domain because only the owner of a domain should be able to make changes to the DNS settings, right? And using the ACMA protocol, this is done fully automatically in traffic. The way it works is you need to give the traffic reverse proxy access to the domain zone that you want to issue the TLS certificates for. And that is by creating an API token and adding it into the traffic reverse proxy. To create an API token in Cloudflare, you need to go to your profile, click on my profile and go to the API tokens section. Here you can create and manage user API tokens and you can also download the API keys. Now, I personally would prefer to create a token because with a token, you can very specifically define permissions for the user. Otherwise with an API key that is global, you give anyone access in to your entire Cloudflare account. And maybe that's not what you want. So I definitely would create a separate API token for each uh, traffic reverse proxy that you, ha that you have created. You can use an API token template so you don't have to mess around with the permission flags and so on. So just choose the edit zone use template because as I said, the traffic reverse proxy needs to create a simple TXT record on your DNS zone. So it only needs this permission here. So here you can see all the domains that you have registered and just select the domain that you're using on your local DNS server for resolving the internal IP address. Now you can also give it an expiry date, but yeah, I don't like this because then you have to always change the API token on your traffic reverse proxy. That's a bit annoying. And let's create this token. Now this token will only show up once. So make sure to store it in a safe location, then attach it to the traffic reverse proxy. The way how you can do this is by using environment variables. So here in the main project directory, I will create a .env file and then you need to use a specific variable. So in the traffic documentation, when you go to HTTPS and TLS and go to Let's Encrypt, here you can see the specific environment variables that the resolvers need, depending on what DNS challenge and which provider you're using. So here you can find all the DNS providers. Uh, again, we are using Cloudflare. Here we have to use the CFDNS API token. So let's copy this uh, value in here. Let's add this to the environment variable. And if we go back to the Docker Compose file, of course, we need to add this environment and then the traffic container should have this uh, secure token. Now to issue trusted TLS certificates, we also need something else. If we go back to the documentation in the overview section, there is an object that we need, which is called certificate resolvers. So by uh, creating certificate resolvers, traffic knows how to issue and retrieving certificates from an ACMA server. And of course we need to create a certificate resolver for Cloudflare. So I'm going to copy a template that I have created that I want to add to the traffic.yaml file. So here I usually add it somewhere here in this section. Here in the certificate resolvers section, you can add uh, different types of resolvers. So here I just create one that is called Cloudflare. Um, you have to set your email address in here and create a storage location. So I usually store them in a var directory that is called traffic certs. So this of course also has to be a persistent volume because otherwise every time you restart the traffic reverse proxy, it needs to regenerate and reissue those certificates. And that is not what we want. Also what is very important here, if you're using a DNS challenge and at the provider Cloudflare, you need to have those IP addresses in the resolvers section because otherwise the traffic reverse proxy will try to resolve the names using your local DNS server and that might not work correctly. So therefore you have to add those IP addresses here as well. Again, if you want to have those templates, check out my boilerplates repository on GitHub. So there I usually manage all those templates. You can copy and paste to your configurations. One thing that we just need for this is we need to go back to the Docker Compose file and create a persistent volume for this. Uh, so here maybe let's add a data directory that we use for these certificates. Also going to create a certs folder in here and mount this into the location that I've specified in the certificate resolver. So var traffic certs and make this read write of course because traffic needs you issue and generate and retrieve the certificate and store it in this location. And that's what we need to issue certificates. So traffic handles the TLS certificate um, 
request and generation process fully automatic. Uh, you just need to tell it to do so. And that you can usually do again in the applications labels. So if we go back to our Nginx the one Docker container, we can create a separate router for the web secure entry point because for HTTPS, we need to use the different entry point. Of course, we are not using the port 80. We're using the port 4 for free. So again, we have to create a new HTTP router and call this Nginx HTTPS. Just give it a different name. And here we first want to enable TLS. So this is the uh, encryption protocol. Then we need to add a cert resolver and set this to name Cloudflare. So this should be the name that you have created here in the static configuration file. If you have a different name here, you need to use a different name here for the cert resolver as well. And then we also need to define the web secure entry point for this router in here. And of course, we also need a host rule so that traffic knows based on which rule it should forward the traffic. Yeah, so I think that's fine. Now we have two entry points here, one for the insecure HTTP protocol and one for the HTTPS protocol. So I think I missed that one here, TLS dot. All right, so let's take the container down and take it up again. And because we have made changes to the static configuration file of traffic, of course, we also need to restart the traffic container. So now you should see that it starts issuing the certificate for the Nginx reverse proxy. It starts to solve the DNS challenge. And that might take a few seconds, depending on how fast the Let's Encrypt and Cloudflare servers are. And once it has created everything, you should be able to access the Nginx server through the HTTPS protocol as well. So let's start using HTTPS. And as you can see, that's the icon for the connection is secured in Chrome. So here we can see we have now a valid uh, TLS certificate that is issued by this certificate authority. So this is ECA from Let's Encrypt and our certificate is valid for this domain. So once that works, you can access your Nginx server using HTTP or HTTPS because both entry points are enabled. Now, I personally I would always try to redirect the unencrypted HTTPS protocol to the HTTPS target using, using a permanent redirection route. And there is also a very simple way how you can do this in traffic. So if we go to the routing and load balancing section entry points, here there is an HTTPS redirection rule that you can attach to the web entry point here. So basically you could just copy this part here, which will add a permanent redirection. So just add this configuration setting in here and restart the traffic reverse proxy. So now if we try to access our Nginx server using the un unsecure HTTPS protocol, it will automatically redirect the connection to the secured HTTPS address. And that's how you can automatically add protection to all your unencrypted web services. By the way, once you have that permanent redirection, you could also think about removing this entry point here from the configuration because then you only need the HTTPS entry point to be available. All right, so yeah, that's how you can easily install and configure traffic to add HTTPS to all of your services and applications in Docker. I think this is really amazing and that's also the reason why I'm using it in so many of my other videos. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for adding more protection and a secure authentication to all the applications running in traffic, then definitely check out my video about the free and open source IDP Authentic. Of course, I will leave you a link in the description box down below. And as always, don't forget to check out my content on Patreon and yeah, maybe consider supporting all the free tutorials I'm making like all these amazing people down here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a nice rest of your day and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.